Hey everyone, Darkwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Ricky. Before we jump into the video, I just wanted to say, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things, it really helps. And if you want to see more content into the future, please consider clicking the Patreon link down below and going to my Patreon, signing up for coaching, or just supporting me in general for that $5 or $10 a month. It really, really helps because for whatever reason, YouTube has not monetized my channel, so I make absolutely no money for making all this content. So in order to keep up making content the future. If you guys really like it and you want to see more of it, please consider supporting if you can. Now that we got that out of the way, let's jump back to the video. So Ricky is a very interesting hero in Dota 2, and the first reason is that he really hasn't had a lot of play in high MMR pubs or in pro level pubs or in the pro scene in general for most of Dota 2's history. And that's largely because this hero has a hard time kind of fitting into any one role. He doesn't farm very well. He doesn't farm super fast. So, you know, having him play carry, it's not the best, but that really is the role that he's fitting into now. He's also been changed a bunch over time. Like his skills have been swapped around. He's been given new skills, etc. So now he's really solidified as a carry because of the, you know, way he plays. But for most of Dota 2's history, it's been hard to find this hero in a specific role. But the other main reason that this hero hasn't had a lot of play in higher MMRs and in the pros is because one of the biggest strengths of this hero, and it's kind of like a cheese hero in some ways, is that his ultimate, right now it's his ultimate, sometimes it's been, you know, a normal skill, it just depends. It allows him to go invisible and stay invisible pretty much permanently, where other heroes like Bounty Hunter, Nyx Assassin, etc., they have, you know, they can go invisible, their ability goes on cooldown, or, you know, it costs mana, these kinds of things where for Ricky, it's a passive ability. It's one of his strengths that he can pretty much be on the map, invisible, scouting people out, looking for pickoffs, etc. And he's always going to be invisible unless he's attacking somebody. Um, so that's a big, big strength. In lower MMRs, um, even in middle tier MMRs, this hero can be very strong because he just, you know, people don't buy dust. People don't buy sentries. They don't use them correctly. But the better that you get, you know, the more effective people are going to be at using those items that kind of hard counter one of this, um, one of this hero's strengths. So, um, in general, you can think of this hero, though, as like a Slark with Shadow Blade, um, almost like permanent Shadow Blade. That's one of the biggest ways you can think about this hero, that whenever the hero's off the map, because the hero's invisible, it's very, very hard to go alone and split push against Ricky. So, obviously, one of Ricky's strengths is that he loves picking people off. He loves killing people in the side lanes when they're alone. He doesn't really love five on five team fights. He can do that when he's, you know, ahead or has a lot of items, but even when he's five on five team fighting, he's not really manning up on people. As a carry, he doesn't really, you know, you know, just hit people one on one, you know, fight people to the death like maybe a troll warlord does. He more like jumps the back line, kills supports. He always wants to be killing people that are running away for him, from him or trying to get away from him. He doesn't like to try to hit people and kill people when they want to hit him back. That's not his strength. So that's how you can think about this hero in general. He's relatively stable as a laner. He's a good laning stage. He doesn't really get crushed in a lot of lanes. Um... He doesn't really dominate lanes either. He just has a stable laning stage and he wants to stay in lanes and farm lanes generally until he gets one or two items and then he's going to farm lanes and heroes. He doesn't really jungle all that quickly. Now you can buy Battle Fury on this hero. It has kind of been an item that is purchased more and more, but it's not super common. It just depends on the patch. So if you're not going Battle Fury, you really don't love farming a lot of jungle creeps on this hero. He mainly wants to be you know, laning stably, getting a good lane, getting like a diffusal blade, let's say. That's usually one of his first items. And then going around the map, picking people off when they're split up. He doesn't love playing against a lot of teams that like to group up five man, etc. And then when they do, he likes to get into fights, pick off supports, and then get out. He kind of jumps in and out of fights, almost like an anti-mage in that way. So that's how to think about Ricky. That's the main way to conceptualize him and how he plays. Now let's jump in and take a look at his abilities. So now that we understand Ricky in general, we can take a look at his abilities and see how he's able to be that carry hero that likes to go in and out of fights, likes to attack people that are running away from him, but also he has that kind of cheesy ability to just stay invisible um, for pretty much ever for the duration of the game unless he is attacking somebody or revealed by dust, etc. So first we're going to take a look at Smokescreen. This yes. is a pretty good, you know, utility ability. It allows him to 
be, even a support at times, but when he's a carry, it's also really, really good for solo picking off people, killing people, jumping on supports, etc. So what you do is you click smoke screen and then you place it in an AoE, and then a cloud comes out. It's like a purple cloud. And what it does is it silences everyone in that AoE, and it also makes the um, enemy miss a lot of attacks in that AoE. So you can see there the axe is attacking the Ricky, and he's missing a lot of his attacks in that AoE. So uh, basically, the miss rate increases, um, the radius also increases, but uh, the silence is always the same. You see the cooldown and the mana changes as well. So that's a big portion of his kit because this allows you to kind of jump in on people and then uh, silence them, and it's hard for them to get away because they can't, you know, use spells. Um, they also can't really fight you in this cloud, so they really want to run away from this cloud. They want to get out of the cloud as fast as possible, and that allows you to do um, extra damage, which we'll see with his other abilities. So that's the main utility ability that he has here to kind of give him versatility in his kit. So, that's smoke screen. Now we can look at Blink Strike. So Blink Strike is a pretty simple ability. It's basically a blink, but it has a little bit of extra things to it because you can't just like blink anywhere. Like I can't just like blink over here. I have to blink to an ally or an enemy. So I can actually blink to um, ally creeps or ally heroes. And it's just basically a blink. It allows me to have some extra mobility. But when I blink on an enemy, what happens is I blink to the back of the enemy and then I am attacking them. Um, and... It just gives you that extra attack there. There's also a slow duration and bonus damage, and you get two charges. So there's two charges of it, which means you can potentially, like, blink on one hero, then blink on another. There's also a brief slow, so if we have Axe running here, we blink on the Axe, he's slowed for a short duration, and I get bonus damage with the attack. Now, the fact that he jumps to the back of the enemy is actually very important. I'm not going to talk about that now, because that has to do with his ultimate. You see, I haven't even skilled that yet, so I will talk about that later, but... Keep in mind that jumping to the back of the hero is something that's important as well. Uh, but that's Blink Strike. Next, we're going to take a look at Tricks of the Trade. So Tricks of the Trade, another kind of mobility spell that also does damage. So you press this and then you click it in an area. You see there's a little bit of a cast range there. And then in that AoE, basically you attack um, a hero or a creep in that AoE. So you can see there, and you also attack them technically from behind. So you're attacking the back of the hero as well. Um, so we can see there it's attacking the dummy target, and then it attacks the axe. So it'll attack one hero in there um, kind of randomly. So you want to either use this on the hero that you're trying to kill or around the hero you're trying to kill. If you use it on creeps like you see here, um, it's not going to be as effective uh, just for like doing damage. So if you're doing damage to a hero, but they're around creeps, it's not really going to do much because potentially it could damage creeps and things like that. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, I will say this, if you do buy Battle Fury, this is a way to farm with this ability more because you can do this here and it'll do cleave damage, which allows you to obviously do more damage. And then also there is an item, Ag Scepter, that basically allows you to attack two targets within that AoE and that allows you to farm more but also do a lot of more a lot more damage in fights as well and that's kind of the main thing that you would buy the Ag Scepter for um, for those two extra hits so there's also a small mobility portion in this ability where you can like jump forward just a smidge and you can like go over cliffs and those kinds of things you can escape uh, those kinds of things so you can like jump here and then you can jump out so you can get in and out of fights obviously with the blink strike having two charges it helps a lot as well I'll put I'll cast this here with um, Ag Scepter so yeah, it's a very good damage ability. It's also something where you can, you know, you blink strike to people, you start attacking them, but then the very end of the, uh, you know, your combo, this is about to wear out the smoke screen. You want to kind of jump in, get some extra damage. It's also good for doing damage while being invulnerable because you can see you kind of disappear and you're invulnerable for the duration. So if, you know, you jump in and people are trying to turn on you, it's a good way to kind of just do damage while they can't do anything to you. Almost like you're phase shifting with Puck, but you're actually doing damage during it. Um, so that's Tricks of the Trade. Those are all of his normal abilities, and you can see how they can kind of combo all together, but the main thing that ties everything in is the ultimate. So I haven't skilled it yet, and that's largely because I wanted to show you some other stuff that happened, like when the axe attacks Ricky, oh, but you when you level up this cloak and dagger spell, what happens is you actually go invisible. So I'll put two levels in it there. And after a short cooldown, basically my hero will go invisible. Now you're permanently invisible. If I try to attack the Ricky with the axe, the axe doesn't even see the Ricky, so he can't even do it um, because I'm just invisible and I can just run around. There's really nothing the enemy can do other than get a sentry or dust to reveal me. Now, if I do attack this dummy target or if I attack axe, I will be revealed and then there's a delay and a cooldown and then I go invisible again. But the other thing that this does, and it's very, very important that this ability passively increases your damage when you're attacking enemies from behind. So, 
if I attack this dummy target from behind, each hit is doing a lot more damage than when I attack from the front. Um, and it's a multiplier of your agility. So this is an agility hero. You buy agility items. It's going to increase your damage a lot. Now, keep in mind, it's not just directly from the back. So you see here, I'm kind of to the side of this hero. So it's basically a 180 degree angle. So anything from 180 degrees, basically behind even to the side of the hero a little bit is technically behind the hero. And then if I move here a little bit, this is in front. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, that obviously synergizes with all of his spells, because if I Blink Strike to the Axe here, I'm behind the Axe, I'm attacking the Axe. When I use my Tricks of the Trade, I'm technically attacking from behind the heroes in that AoE. So it's very, very important to understand that you want to be attacking from behind the heroes. That, that does exactly what I said before, that makes the hero want to attack players that are running away. You don't want to man fight people. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to fight somebody and then they're just turning and they're fighting you because you're not getting that extra damage. You're not like, you might be slightly tanky, tanky. You do buy agility items. You have good armor, these kinds of things, but it's just not effective for you to maximize your damage and do what you want to do when you are, you know, man fighting people. That's not what your hero does. So largely you want to go in on supports. You want to jump here so they don't have BKB, these kinds of things. And then you want to force them to run away, but kill them before they're able to really run away. And then you can chase them down with all of your mobility spells, etc. And then, essentially, once you do that, maybe you'll blink out to your ally, you'll kind of reset the fight, wait for your cooldowns to come back, because these are all relatively low cooldown spells, and then you can jump back in, kill another player, etc. So that's basically how you want to be playing Ricky, jumping in and out, killing people that are running away, etc., etc. And this is also how you can get pickoffs in the side lane, because you usually buy a Diffusal Blade. So Diffusal Blade is a very, very good item for picking off um, solo heroes. So basically what you can do, let's say Axe is just, you know, Axe is just chilling, he's farming, whatever, you can you can blink in, you can slow him, and you can place this cloud down, and now he can't run out of the cloud, there's pretty much nothing he can do, and you're just like hitting him over and over again, you know, you're blink striking to him again, you're using tricks of the trade after the slow and the cloud is done, etc, etc, and you're really, really easily able to pick off supports, and even sometimes tank your heroes too if you have a really good game and a good defusal timing. Um, so that's Ricky, those are his abilities. The last thing I I will say is Sleeping Dart is the shard. It's actually important. It's very good. It's not really a great carry item, but it's good in general because what you do is you just shoot a dart at somebody and they essentially go to sleep. Uh, and then if you attack them, they do wake up. So we hit the enemy there and then I can attack the axe and now he's awake. But it's just a good way to kind of have a little bit of extra um, effect in fights. Maybe put somebody to sleep that you don't want to have to deal with in a fight, etc, etc. So it's just a little bit of extra, you know, utility that this hero does have. And this sort of allows him to be played as a support occasionally as well. So that's Ricky. Those are all of his abilities. Now let's jump into a game and see how he's played. So now we're jumping into a replay here of Gork playing Ricky safe lane. And I really couldn't find too many uh, replays of, you know, high-level pubs pro players playing this hero right now. It's really not that popular in the meta. Um, and so because of that, we are looking here at Gork. Gork, obviously, good player, but obviously just more of a streamer, not like a pro or anything. I mean, he does, he is in Division 2, but, um, the reason why I'm prefacing that is just because you'll see a mistake coming up here in a bit as we watch the laning stage, but really, the laning stage on Ricky is relatively simple. He's kind of just a stable laner in that you just kind of get your CS. Um, you're pretty mobile, so you're hard to bring down because you can usually blink in and out um, if, if people try to go on you. Once you get level 2 and you get tricks in the tr tricks of the trade and your blink strike, you're very, very mobile, so you're very hard to bring down um, in general. The thing is, you're not going to be super aggressive. I mean, you can blink in, you can get aggressive. It largely depends on your five position. He has a five position um, brewmaster here, which is kind of an odd five position to have. But uh, in general, it maybe largely depends on your five position, whether they can be very aggressive, if they're very strong, if they're whittling someone down, etc, etc. Because until you get that level six timing, you're not going to be doing as much damage by attacking people from the back. So until you get that level six and you're invisible, but you also get that bonus damage, you're really not going to be doing a ton of damage. You can see he is good enough to last it. I mean, he has decent base damage, so it's not like he's tickling people or anything. I mean, he has good base damage for last hitting and stuff like that, but in general, he's just not as effective at uh, harassing and these kinds of things and doing damage um, until he is level six. But otherwise, you could potentially look to get kills, but just like most carry matchups, you're going to want to relatively play safe farm pretty well. He has good damage, he has good regen, so you usually can stay in lane pretty effectively um, for the most part, but uh, coming up here, we'll see that you aren't exactly, you don't have the highest HP pool, um, you don't really get super aggressive on players, so you can kind of lose a lot of health very quickly, so we can see here, 
He looks to get aggressive, but he's obviously tanking a lot of creeps, tanking a lot of spells, uses tricks of the trade, but inside of a creep, ra creep wave, so it doesn't really do very much. And now he looks to go um, get elasted on a range creep, puts himself out of position, low mana, low health, no more blink strikes, and ends up giving away first blood. So obviously, that's a little bit of a mistake there, but mainly I wanted to show you um, this laning stage because you can see how you kind of just want to play, not passively necessarily, you don't just want to like you know, use no mana, certainly, you have mana, you need to use this as a resource, use your blink strike, use your tricks of the trade, get some harass on the enemy if possible, if they're out of position, these kinds of things, but you relatively have a low HP pool, you're not the tankiest hero in the world, you do have good regen, you do have high armor, you do have good base attack damage, so relatively, you know, play relatively safe, play for your timings, because once you hit level 6, you do way more damage, you're much, much harder to kill. And once you get that Diffusal Blade, which is usually the item that you're rushing first, you are going to have a lot more kill threat on the map and just a lot more presence. So you want to play for those timings to get those timings out as much as possible. So you see how, obviously, the enemy can go on him very easily, but now with a little bit of help from the Brewmaster, he can also get a kill. So I think this is the perfect um, example of how... Ricky can kind of just be your average, typical, you know, decent laner. He's not like the strongest. He's not the weakest. He can go on players that are out of position if his five position is there, but he can also die pretty easily with his low HP pool against a lot of spells um, that come out from heroes like Pango and like Bane. So that's Ricky's laning stage. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, pretty easy. Nothing too complicated other than your normal, you know, you know safe lane laning uh, mechanics and those kinds of things. So we jumped ahead a few minutes here, and I just want to show you this little sequence because he does get caught out of position. He just gets level 6, but unfortunately he dies to the Pango roll. But a lot of other heroes, let's say like a Luna or a Medusa or something else like this, if they were in this position where, you know, they're kind of solo laning, they just hit level 6, they died a couple times in lane, it doesn't feel great, they're probably going to go to the jungle, but not Ricky. Ricky doesn't really do that. He likes to stay in lane, he wants to keep staying in the lane. Now that he has his level 6, he's going to be doing more damage, it's a lot harder to kill him, he has his, you know, invis, so he can potentially escape as long as they don't have vision on him or don't have dust. So he's going to go back to the lane, and largely you need to stay in your lane. So I know that, you know, sometimes if you're against like a timber saw, you're against some off laners that are just can crush you or can kill you really easily, obviously. You know, it's not always going to be possible. Sometimes you do need to jungle, but really, jungling is just not something you want to do on this hero. Um, but once you hit level 6 and you have some damage, you can look to get involved. But really, I would say don't do what he's doing here. I think Gork just tries to get involved too much for uh, content. Where really, you just want to be playing for yourself, playing in the lane, getting your farm, and getting this defusal timing. Because really, he, you know, he's about 1,500 gold from defusal here. And with that... Uh, he would be able to, you know, then that's when you want to get involved. But otherwise, you need to be laning. You need to be potentially rotating between lane and jungle. Maybe you can kill the small camp. Maybe you can kill the big camp. You do have good regen. Otherwise, though, you don't really want to do much other than farm your lane, get your item timing, um, and not really get too involved um, until then. So you see they're down 4k, and the Ricky has died three times, and he's looking to get involved when he doesn't even have his defusal yet, so largely you need to look to only get involved once you have your defusal, once you have this timing, um, because otherwise it's just, you just aren't really effective until you have it, so it's just one of these heroes, you're not going to jungle, you're not going to, you know, get involved, you kind of just want to get that treads defusal timing, um, and then maybe potentially if you're going battle fury, get your battle fury timing and keep farming if you feel like you can't pick people off, that's definitely a possibility to get battle fury, but usually you're going to get this uh, defusal timing and then you can look to hunt people, but until then, you know, you can see how ineffective he is at farming and also at picking people off until he gets this defusal, so that's largely how you want to be transitioning out of the laning stage into your level 6 timing and your first item timing. Now we skipped ahead a few minutes here, and he finally got his defusal timing, and now is the perfect time to look to get involved, because a lot of heroes aren't going to have the items to deal with this defusal, especially supports. You know, you might have a mid laner like Ember that has some kind of item, like a Yules or something else. Um, unfortunately, they do have vision on him, but you can see, despite that, he doesn't even care. He puts down his uh, smoke screen, he has that cloud, one point in it, he uses his defusal on the Bane, and there's pretty much nothing they can do. Uh, the Ember does end up getting out because he has a remnant placed in the back, but you can see how strong that is. The defusal timing is extremely strong. There's pretty much no support that's going to survive in the early part of the game when you get this defusal timing. And you can see he got this like 13 minute defusal. He could have had a much earlier one if he didn't end up trying to get too involved early on or like die those few times in lane. But you can see how effective this is. They end up jumping obviously with the DK and with the storm. But the fact that he has that smoke screen there, that cloud to put down, and the fact that he has that defusal is just, he's able to jump anybody, anybody in the game because this TA 
doesn't have BKB yet. You know, they're not going to have the items that they need to deal with this Ricky at this time. So this is the perfect opportunity to look to get involved, to look to kill people when they're caught out. Now, you can see right there, he didn't want to go and get involved there because it was clearly like a 4v1 or a 3v1. So it's not something where you want to put yourself... It's, you can't just like kill people... Um, when everybody's together. If the whole team is together, you need to be careful, you need to be wary, but solo pickoffs when people are, are alone, that's definitely something you can do on Ricky, and that's what you want to be looking for. Otherwise, when he can't do it, when he feels like, you know, the uh, enemy's not showing, he doesn't know where they are, you definitely want to hit lane creeps, or potentially the jungle... It's not like you can't jungle in this hero. It's just not ideal. So when no one on the enemy is showing, all they see is Ember Top. You know, their Storm's dead. He doesn't really feel comfortable going mid. He doesn't feel comfortable being in these positions. He only has a Diffusal Blade right now. So he's going to um, farm the jungle. And that's okay. It's just that mainly you want to farm heroes in the lane when possible. So that's kind of how to transition into the mid game when you hit your Diffusal timing with Ricky and how to be effective with him there. So now we're jumping into a different game here of Emo playing Ricky, largely because I couldn't really find any examples of Gork playing Ricky later in the game uh, effectively. He kind of just like fed and they lost, which is kind of funny. No offense to him, but that's just what happened. So he goes in here, Emo goes in here on Ricky, and actually this Ricky was a mid Ricky, but once you get this Diffusal Blade, it's kind of played the same way. I just want to show you how to team fight. So he goes in. He kills the Disruptor, he gets out, so you can see how he uses his Blink Strike, he uses his Tricks of the Trade, he basically tries to get out of the fight because, you know, he knows they're going to go on him, he's relatively weak right now, so that's what he does there, he regens up with a salve that I think his support gave him, um, so he gets regen back up and he's looking to fight again because he, this is a low cooldown hero so you don't have any big cooldowns once your cooldowns are back up again you can easily kill people um right again so the queen alt has already been used a lot of spells on the enemy have already been used and he can go back in get another kill so you can see he goes in there gets a kill on the panda but then uses his last uh, his second blink strike to blink out to safety again but now that his cooldowns are coming back off cooldown again, his uh, Diffusal Blade's up, his smoke screen's about to be up now, he's looking to get aggressive again. He sees that there's a, a sentry down, so he knows they see him, but still, he can look to get aggressive because he has all of his cooldowns up. So this is exactly how you want to be playing this hero later in the game. You see he jumps into the catapult there, puts the smoke screen down, and then Diffusal Blades the uh, Disruptor and gets another kill on the Disruptor. So you can see how scrappy, long, drawn-out fights where he just goes in, kills people one by one. Um, he doesn't love to, you know, fight where everybody's there. You know, when the entire team was there and they were using big spells, he was trying to get out. But then as soon as they're on the back foot, they don't have spells left. You know, there's a player by themselves or something like that, like the Disruptor was, like the um, Panda was when he was low. That's when he's going in. He's using all of his abilities. He's getting a kill really quick. And then he's, you know, he's uh, blink striking out. And then he's waiting for all of his abilities to come off cooldown again. Then he's going back in, getting another kill. This is exactly how you want to be playing Ricky. Um, the perfect way to team fight later on in the game. So mid game to later, this is exactly how you're going to be playing this hero. So I just want to show you this clip really quickly here. Um, how in the last like honestly five plus minutes, he's just been fighting nonstop. He took a little bit of time to farm, but he's largely just fighting. Uh, because this is what this hero does. You want to constantly fight. Your cooldowns are so low. You can just fight constantly, non-stop, as long as you have some mana and health. So we can see he goes in on the Jug, gets the kill on the Jug with the help of the Skyrath. But then the Disruptor TPs in. And this is what I wanted to show you. So the Disruptor TPs in, tries to glimpse him back into a Static Storm, and he uses his Tricks of the Trade to get out, to disjoint that glimpse, and to basically survive and not die there. So that's a very, very important point to make on this hero. When you're getting in and out of fights, when you are kind of blink striking in, blink striking out, these kinds of things, you're not just using tricks of the trade for damage. You also want to make sure you're using this ability to get um, out of sticky situations to disjoint stuns, to disjoint projectiles, all of these kinds of things, because you are invulnerable for the duration. So it's just a small trick, a small thing to note, that that's definitely what you want to be keeping in mind. You don't just want to waste tricks of the trade all the time for damage. You can use it to survive. So I skipped ahead a little bit here, and the one thing I wanted to show you is once you get your Manta, Manta is a very, very important item on this hero, because unlike using Manta with Luna or with Medusa or other things, you don't really use Manta to farm or split push. You really use it to scout because your Manta illusions also benefit from your invisibility. And so we can see, I'll just speed it up here. He uses his Manta, or his manta illusions to scout a little bit to see where the enemy is. Um, and he does this multiple times within the next like five minutes. Um, so we can see he used it there after he dewarded the enemy. His Manta's back up. He gets this Arcane Rune really quick. And uh, 
before farming this, or right after farming this, I believe. He uses his Manta Illusions, and then he sends them kind of one into the jungle, and then one down through the lane to just see where the enemy is, and he scouts them out really, really well to just give information. So this is definitely something you can do. Obviously, it's a kind of like a little trick, higher level play, but this is one reason that Manta is very, very good on this hero. The other main way that you use Manta, though, is in team fights. So I'm not sure if we'll see that here. We can see him just constantly using it off cooldown, though, to get um, information to scout out to see what the enemy is doing. And as such, we can see that, you know, he's looking for perfect opportunities to go on the back line um, in the fights, which is exactly what you want to do. But basically, you're also going to be using Manta for dust. So when the enemy uses dust and they don't just have sentries and they try to dust and kill you, you can Manta the dust off because that dispels. So then you will, you know, you go on enemies, they dust to try to kill you, they try to turn and kill you, they pop BKB. Well, what you can do if they don't have a sentry down, you just Manta, you escape, um, you get away from the dust, they no longer have vision on you, and you can just run away. It's a perfect, perfect item for Ricky. Gives him everything that he needs. Um, good utility, good versatility. And this hero is just super, super strong. You can see, 30 minutes into the game, all he has is Diffusal Manta. And he's just still very, very good. Um, this dishes out a lot of damage with only these two items. He's not like a super high farming hero. He does a lot with a little bit. Um, and that's just some tricks that, that you can do with Manta, which is one of the best items on this hero. So the last clip I'm going to show you here is basically just how you want to think about Ricky in general in team fights. Now, I know I said you want to get in and out. You want to kind of solo pick off heroes, which we're looking at him do there. He uses Manta offensively this time. But he also is constantly, like, on the back line. He's either going for supports or he's sitting waiting for the perfect opportunity to go in. Because you're not, like, a super tanky hero. You don't man up. The fact that nobody knows where you are and you have this invis and you're just running around scouting people or whatever, it's just one of these things that... You don't really love showing. You don't want a front line. You want to hopefully have other players on your team, other heroes on your team that want to do that because you just want to sit back. You want to wait for the perfect opportunities to go in on the key heroes, whether that's the disruptor, whether that's, you know, a mid play, mid hero, whatever it is. He goes in here now, gets his tricks of the trade off um, in the chrono to do damage. He's just constantly being patient and waiting for the perfect opportunity to go in and dish out a lot of damage, secure kills, and then secure the game. So that's just the perfect example of how to think about Ricky in general. He's very elusive, in and out kind of uh, carry where you jump in, you do a lot of damage, you get out, you go in the back line, you kill the support. The amount of times that he's tried to kill the Disruptor and the Veno in this game, I think that's like almost the only heroes that he ever goes on. Occasionally, he'll jump in on the Queen of Pain. That's pretty much it um, for the majority of the game. You're constantly skirmishing, constantly fighting. Um, you do a lot with very, very few items. You can see he only really has three items here, or you could really say two if you want to say Diffusal and Blink counts as one item for the net worth. He doesn't really have the most net worth, but he does a ton of damage. He's very useful. Um, he's not a low cooldown hero, so you want to, want to constantly be looking for pickoff, skirmishing, those kinds of things. So that's how to play Ricky. That's the general way to think about Ricky. He's a very, very good hero for stomping pubs. He's not great at higher MMRs because, you know, people play around his weaknesses and play around his invis. But still, you can stomp games with this hero if you know how to play this hero and you're effective at him. Um, if you get your good defusal timing, you will just pick people off constantly if they ever separate from their team. So that's how to play Ricky. That's my Ricky guide. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all of those kinds of things if you enjoy the videos. Um, if you want to support me and continue supporting what I do, um, and hopefully I can make more videos in the future, go to my Patreon. There's also coaching available there. Join the Discord if you haven't already. Um, go to my Twitch. I usually stream every Friday to do replay reviews. You can re request replay reviews for free, um, either in the chat or on my Discord. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.